I spent most of my life wanting more. More money, more security, more friends, more this, more of that. You know, I don't think I was any different than a lot of people. The notion that, that more is better is everywhere. We're bombarded with messages of gotta have this or have to get the latest that, implying that when I get the this or the that, I will be happy. But until then, I'm somehow lacking in some way, unhappy without it. My happiness or self-love was dependent on getting more than what I already had. It was so powerful for me. I discovered that even when I did go out and get the latest big screen TV or the newest, coolest phone or whatever it may be, the thing I had to have, there was a problem. Because as long as I was in a state of more is better, more money, more sex, better car, nicer house, etc., I was unhappy on some level without it. You see, once I got more, it never seemed to be enough. And when that happened, then guess what I wanted? Exactly, more. I'd created this mindset of always lacking something in my life. If only I had this or that, my life would be better. I was never thankful for what I had, where I was, or who I was with in any given moment. I was identifying who I was with what I had, which is a hugely dangerous place to be. And that's my ego at work, which I'll talk about more in a future blog. Do you think sometimes we set ourselves up? I mean, I've often pondered this one. Take something as basic as the days of the week. Now, I used to hear people say, and I, and I still do all the time, I can't wait for the weekend, but it's only Tuesday. This sucks. What a long week this is going to be. You know what I mean? You see it and hear it all the time. Creating this idea, and you know, we pass it on to our kids, that somehow Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are fantastic. Those are the days to look forward to. What am I doing when I think like that? Sure, I'm creating three happy days. But at the same time, I'm also creating four unhappy ones, aren't I? What I think about something is what I will create. Why is Friday better than Tuesday, really? The only answer I could come up with is because I make it that way. It's impossible for a day in itself to be bad. The only thing that makes a day bad is the way I choose to look at it, how I see it, what I think about it. All of that is in my control. So I decided to stop letting calendar makers decide how happy I was. I always seemed to be looking ahead. Happiness seemed to be everywhere but where I was right here, right now. Now I guarantee if I go into a Tuesday thinking it's going to be a bad day, then that is exactly what it will be. And that's what my thoughts will create. My thoughts create my reality. I needed to change the way I think. The law of thinking is so huge for me. And of course, I will touch on that again in a future blog. In the meantime, I invite you to reread um, Think About What You're Thinking About from the previous blog series posted here. So now I continue to build on that foundation of forgiveness. Remember, at Freddie Mac's house of love. So let's put up the door now. Let's make that door another loving attribute. Gratitude. Huge. I finally learned the secret to getting more. You might want to write this one down. It's really quite simple. I get more by being thankful for what I already have. By slowly chipping away at my thoughts of lack and changing those to thoughts of abundance, by looking forward to Tuesday as much as Friday, as I started doing this and becoming more aware of my thoughts, something magical, and it is magical, started to happen in my life. First of all, Tuesdays got a whole hell of a lot better. Second and most importantly, it seems like when I am thankful for anything that shows up in my life, that anything always seems to get better. So if anything I'm thankful for gets better, then why in the world wouldn't I choose to be thankful for everything, even the past? Wouldn't my whole life be better? My answer is yes. I can only tell you what I've been through. When I didn't appreciate what I had in my life, my life depreciated. But when I started to appreciate what I had, no matter how little, my life started to appreciate, as in more showed up. It is mind-blowing 
to experience the magic. Now, as hard as it is sometimes, I try to be thankful for everything that shows up in my life, including my alcoholism. The universe loves gratitude. And I know now, if I think I'm lacking something, then that is exactly what I will get in return. It's like a boomerang, more lack. In other words, more of what I don't have and more of what I don't want. If I'm thankful though for the abundance in my life, no matter how much that is, then that is what I will get in return. More of what I think. It's all energy. Now, a couple of things that really, really help me personally, if you want to get going on this. Um, I try to keep a gratitude journal, whether it be on paper or in this big head of mine. At the end of the day, I write down all the things that I'm thankful for in that day. Sometimes it's the same people or things. It's always easy to pick out nice things that happen to you. But most times I try to change it up because truly, we have so much that we can be thankful for. I might even thank the guy who drove way too slow in front of me on Canada Street that morning for reminding me that I need to work on my patience. You can be thankful for everything, good or bad. Know that it's supposed to happen, maybe. The second thing, and this is so huge for me, try to live with as much perspective as possible. And I'll never forget reading somewhere that, how's it go? if we have these three things, a warm bed, a roof over our head, and food in the fridge, we are better off than 75% of the world's population. Just those three things. It's crazy. That's why sometimes I write the roof over my head in my gratitude journal. So, Welcome to the wonderful world of perspective. It's crazy. My kids always running around talking about perspective. I love it. Perspective is everywhere, even at my gym. See, there's this guy at my gym. His name is Chris. Now, Chris works out three times a week, and Chris never misses an opportunity to smile, to say hi, to give me a great big high five and call me Frank because he can't remember my name. Doesn't matter. Chris is happy. Chris is thankful. Chris is love in action. And Chris, is in a wheelchair. He has no use of his legs, none. And he has very limited use of his arms. And his motor skills are obviously severely challenged. Chris has, e Chris has every excuse in the world not to smile, not to say hi, not to give me that big high five every time I see him and not to go to the gym. And when I don't feel like going to the gym or saying hi to people or smiling, I think of my friend Chris, who helps me realize through perspective that I don't need more to be happy. I always have what I will ever need. And as long as I'm in that state of mind, that's when more shows up. And for that, Chris, I'm thankful. High five, buddy. Peace.